Hi, I'm Shane. And I'm Miranda, or Chicky. Welcome to our big adventure through Western Canada. In our first episode in this series, we take on Western Canada's largest city, Vancouver. We traverse the longest suspension bridge in BC and explore the expansive Stanley Park with its famous seawall by bike. After picking up our camper van, we begin our epic two-week Canadian camping road trip, starting on Vancouver Island with a visit to the quaint capital of BC, Victoria. We explore the interior of the largest island on the west coast of North America with its mossy temperate rainforests, waterfalls and giant trees. Arriving into beautiful Tofino, Canada's surfing capital, also a wildlife hotspot. Here we discover its rugged coastline and laid back atmosphere in this tranquil setting. Before undertaking a wilderness boat tour into the Clare Quartz Sound, spotting black bears, seals, sea otters and bald eagles. Follow us for this adventure and more on Global Travel Stories. In 2020, we were set to embark on a big trip in Canada and Alaska. Our dream was ruined by pandemic travel restrictions. However, there is always hope. We're in Canada. So we've arrived in Vancouver last night from New York. And today we are going to be exploring all around Vancouver and going forward on our two and a half week trip throughout BC and Alberta. This adventure finally took place in the summer of 2022 and our experiences exceeded all expectations. Okay, so we've just picked up some bikes here from Spokes Bike Rentals and we're about to go over the Lionsgate Bridge to the Capilano Suspension Bridge and then after that we'll come down here and explore Stanley Park by a bike. It's pretty cool. Good. So we're here at the Capilano Suspension Bridge in Vancouver. The last time I was here was December 2013. So that was eight and a half years ago. I was here in the winter time. They had the Christmas displays, absolutely stunning. I'm really curious to see what it looks like in the summertime. So we're gonna go check it out. The park pays homage to the early pioneers, First Nations people and culture, and is home to British Columbia's longest suspension footbridge, attracting over 1.2 million visitors annually. A great introduction to the culture of Western Canada. We're on the Capilano Suspension Bridge. It's 140 meters long and 70 meters high. Pretty spectacular. Uh, it's kind of crazy, it just sort of sways and rocks. But... This is the uh, Treetops Adventure, which we're about to go up to. And it kind of looks a little bit like the Ewok Village in Return of the Jedi. How was it, Chicky? So this is all part of an ancient temperate rainforest and some of the trees here are 1,500 years old. Some of these big cedar trees that we have around us, it's pretty spectacular.
highlight of the park is the 213 meter cliff walk. With consideration to its environmental impact, it only uses 16 anchor points, yet is strong enough to support 45 tons. As we head back towards town, we cross the famous Lionsgate Bridge one more time before heading into Stanley Park, situated below. There's a total of nine totems and a lot of them have been on display since the 1960s, although some were built in the 1800s. They each represent a different First Nation in British Columbia. which we cycled over before to get to the Capilano Bridge. And now we're just biking down the seawall in Stanley Park. At 28 kilometers long, the seawall in Vancouver is the world's longest uninterrupted seawall. The most popular 10 kilometer section loops around Stanley Park and is popular for walking, jogging, and cycling. So that was our day cycling around Vancouver. We're about to return the bikes. You enjoy it? Yeah, that was so much fun. Do you enjoy the seawall? Yeah, it was pretty cool actually. Really beautiful ride. Oh, yeah. uh, the Capilano Bridge as well was pretty cool. Although I will say I did prefer it when I came here in the winter just because there were less people. It was very, very busy today and also the Christmas lights made a really cool effect. Still awesome to check out anyway. We're down here at English Bay, so this is a really cool spot. I used to come down here when I was visiting friends and we'd come down here at sunset and have a couple of beers. So it's a great place to chill out at the end of the day. So we're here at Wicked Campers. We've picked up our ride for the next few weeks, which is a camper van, of course. Miranda and I have had plenty of experiences driving in camper vans. We did uh, two months around New Zealand a couple of years ago. If you guys have seen those videos there. So we're kind of uh, looking forward to getting back into the camper van lifestyle. I'll show you around the van a little bit. So here is the back. We've got Ooh. some camping stoves, pots and pans, cooler. Plates, bowls, cutlery, things like that. Nice. A washing up sink. Cool. And what's it say on the back there? How about sex and pizza? Or don't you like pizza? Oh, cheeky. So suggestive. So suggestive. <laughs> and then it says baby, baby burn. burn on the side. Cool. Um, and then, yep, yeah, this is the back. We can set it up to bed later, but right now it's just storing all of our things. And there's loads of storage space under here as well. And also a table as well. Yes. Table and chairs. Table and chairs. Cool. Yep. We'll unpack everything later. Let's do it. All right, so we have officially started our two and a half week camper van trip throughout Canada, so BC and Alberta. And our first stop is to Victoria on Vancouver Island. So we're at Swanson BC Ferry Terminal right now. And we're heading over, exploring Victoria a little bit today and then heading to our campsite, which is just outside of Nanaimo called Little Qualicum Falls and then spending a few nights in Tofino before heading back to the mainland and traveling that a little bit. Yeah. Technically, 
specifically suggesting minute, we are currently in Washington State. In the USA. In the USA. <laughs> the ferry ride between Swanson Terminal south of Vancouver to Schwartz Bay just outside of Victoria takes about an hour and a half. It is a scenic 42 kilometre journey through the Strait of Georgia, complete with inlets, small islands and picturesque settlements. Vancouver Island. Just a quick stop over on our way up to Little Qualicum Falls today. It's a beautiful little town. It's actually the most British or European feeling town in Canada from my experience anyway. There's a lot of little manicured gardens and flower pots everywhere which is really cool and some of the old architecture is really nice. It's actually my third time here in Victoria but Miranda's first time. So what do you think so far? No, it's really pretty. It's I like the buildings and yeah manicured gardens and everything. So. Lovely. And we might even see some uh, seaplanes take off in the harbour as well, which is pretty cool. Victoria is the capital of the country's westernmost province, British Columbia. It retains a heritage feel due to being one of the oldest British settlements in Western Canada, dating back to 1843, and is named after the British monarch at the time, Queen Victoria. So we're heading out to the marina right now and there's a lot of cool little floating bars and restaurants out there and from the marina we're actually going to get one of these little water taxis back to the harbour. So last time we were down here at the Fisherman's Wharf on the marina, there were a couple of little bars and restaurants, but now it seems to be overwhelming. Unfortunately, we don't have much time, so we are going to get on one of those little water taxis, but it looks really cool. What do you think, Miranda? Such a cute little place. Oh. What do you think about getting some ice cream before oh, we go on the boat? Hell yes. <laughs> okay. I would never say no to Let's ice cream. That. Victoria, we head two hours north to our tranquil rainforest campground at Little Qualicum Falls. Falls Provincial Park and we're walking to the falls right now. We actually just stayed here at the campground last night and it was absolutely beautiful. So we're gonna explore the falls, make some lunch in the day, day use area and then head up to Tofino and maybe see some stops along the way. Go, cool. let's do it. Qualicum Falls Loop is an easy two kilometer trail to the lower and upper falls and it can easily be completed within an hour. A great place to spot the cedar waxwing and American robins around the riverbanks. What do you think, Chicky?
So Qualicum Provincial Park is part of the traditional land of the Qualicum First Nation tribe and it's also a UNESCO World Heritage Biosphere area so there's some really unique plants that uh, that spring up here and flowers that spring up here in the springtime. It also is native habitat for the Douglas fir trees and some of the big cedar trees which we are going to see very very shortly on our way to Tofino. So we're here at the insanely popular Cathedral Grove at McMillan Provincial Park. And this place is really famous for these really, really tall cedar trees. I'm gonna check out some of them on the old growth trail and then we'll go to the Living Forest Trail on our way to Alberni, which is where we're gonna stop and uh, pick up some supplies. Upon entering the forest of gigantic trees, we heard the tapping of a downy woodpecker looking for a meal. So some of the larger trees in this forest are 800 years old. Most of the ones we see around here are about 300 years old and would have sprouted up around the same time that there was a wildfire or just after the wildfire 300 years ago. Just stopped off at Tim Hortons, which is a staple in Canada. It's kind of a fast food chain that started up in the 1960s and it's named after a famous Canadian hockey player. They're famous for their donuts. What have you got here, Miranda? I've got two of their dream donuts. Well, actually, this one's a specialty donut. It's called Canadian Maple. And it's a dream donut and it's Reese's Cheesecake. All right, so it's that peanut butter. Give yeah. it a try. My first time having twin Tim Hortons. All right, let me try this one. Do you wish? Delicious. So we're down at the Sprout Lake Provincial Park. They've actually got an event on today called the Lightning on the Lake, which is like a speedboat sort of event. But we're actually walking down to the petroglyphs, which are ancient native petroglyphs down here known as Ka'aka Wen. I hope I pronounced that correctly. And that basically means something on its back referring to the dorsal fin of the killer whales or the orcas, which you'll see in some of the petroglyphs. Now, in the, the indigenous Nootka culture, the orca was kind of like the wolf of the sea, the marine wolves, because they hunt in packs. So it was quite a significant creature to them. Let's check them out. With bald eagles soaring above and the common mergenser in the lake carrying her numerous ducklings, the atmosphere was very tranquil. So Miranda's excited because we got our first comment about the car, <laughs> about our camper van. The guy said, hey, does that pizza come with anchovies? <laughs> I didn't even know how to respond. Miranda's like, sure if sure? she said sure if you want. <laughs> so we're at Wally Creek, which is on the way to Tofino. This was one of the spots that we read online was one of the best spots to stop and take photographs. 
It's actually quite difficult to see, so you have to sort of keep an eye out on the side of the road for a little sign, but it's stunning. We're gonna go get some photographs now. Located almost halfway between Port Alberni and Tofino, Wally Creek is known as one of the best local swimming spots on the Kennedy River. in Tofino and we're staying at the Bella Pacifica campground. We're gonna spend the next few days just chilling out here in Tofino. Might do a little bit of hiking. There's some great little walks in the area. Maybe even a little surfing as well. But uh, looking at the water right now, it's pretty flat. Kind of looks like glass. Either way, looking forward to a few days just chilling out here in Tofino. feeling a little bit smorish. Look at that. That's how you make a small. Kinda. Sorta. <laughs> Sorta. All right, Marina's teaching me how to small. All right, we're going the, the marshmallow. You want the marshmallow melty, but not burny, right? Might as well show off the interior of the van. It's a little bit messy right now. We've been sleeping in here. But uh, this is pretty much what it looks like on the inside. With the curtains up, it's uh, it's actually nice and dark in here, so you don't get much sunlight in. We've been sleeping really well. It's been really comfortable, actually. A little light up there as well. All right, so just a little bit about bear safety. We've got a bear spray. Really simple to use. You just pull off this tab here at the top and pull it down. Psh and spray your bear, spray your bear. <laughs> All right, so we're heading to Tofino town today, but we're taking the scenic route from our campground. So we're heading through some temperate rainforests and stopping by Middle Beach and Tonquin Beach on the way. The trail we're currently on is called the Tonquin Trail. And, you know, even though it's a highly trafficked trail, there are still black bears in the area. Vancouver Island uh, has a really high density of black bears. In fact, we saw one yesterday, didn't we? We did, it was so cute. It was on the side of the highway, so we couldn't really stop. But it was just like on its two hind legs, standing up yeah. and just looking really curiously. It sort was of, really cute. Yeah, peering over this causeway thing, but it was pretty cool. <laughs>
from the secluded third beach, we made our way through the thick forest down to Tonquin Beach, the closest to Tofino Township. So the Tonquin was the name of an American fur trading vessel that visited the area in 1811 and it treated the village as poorly, went through and pretty much created atrocities amongst the local villages. So the local Tla Oquiat warriors banded together and they actually sunk the ship just off the coast here and that's where the beach itself gets its name. I'm not sure if Miranda's aware of this, but these are actually foxgloves, and foxgloves are poisonous, right? They're toxic. I've only heard that for about the 20th time. Alrighty, so we're heading to downtown Tofino now. In the early 1900s, the settlement started as a logging and fishing community, named after the nearby Tofino Inlet. This name dates back to 1792, given by the Spanish explorers Galeano and Valdez, named after Galeano's former cartography teacher. Company after a long day of walking around town and walking through the forest, it's kind of nice to have a beer. And I thought I might try out a few different ones, so I got a flight. Got uh, Blondale here. This one here is infused with spruce pine needles. I have also a stout too, and this is a kelp stout. I'm not sure what that is. Kelp's like seaweed, right? I don't know. And cosmic ale, and this one here is apparently 9%, so still quick taste of them. So that's nice and refreshing, that's a kind of a sweet flavor. That one's super hoppy if you like IPAs. This one's similar to an IPA and it does have kind of like a piney aftertaste. Ooh, that's good. As far as stouts go, that's good. Not usually the time of year that I'll drink stouts, I usually drink those in the winter, but that's really smooth. Ooh, and there's your 9% right there. <laughs> Heading back to Mackenzie Beach, we celebrated the evening with some live entertainment and some good old fashioned barbecue. Where are we? Little Ronnie's barbecue. Hey. A great experience and a must do when in Tofino. currently on the famous rainforest walk in Tofino and we've got quite a few things planned for today so first we're going on this walk which goes as like a figure eight and then after that we're going to three beaches so Long Beach, Cox Beach and Chesterman's Beach and then we're going on a bear watching tour. Mm, going on a bear hunt. Yeah. <laughs> 
Not a bear hunt. Going to catch a big one. We're going to watch from far away. We're going to go on a boat and watch from far away as the bears come and feast on the little mollusks and stuff at low tide. Crabs. Crabs. Crustaceans. <laughs> Crustaceans. <laughs> yeah. All that sort of stuff. So that will be fun. Good. All right, let's do it. Beautiful suspended walkways here. We just came across a couple of uh, West Coast Blue Jays as well. The Rainforest Trail is an easy walk made up of two one-kilometer loop walks signposted as A and B. Both walks can be completed within an hour and are located within a 25-minute drive from Tofino Township. See these giant cedar trees sort of rising up from the ground, some of them hundreds of years old, amongst some of the hemlock trees and all this beautiful regrowth forest here as well. In 1778, Captain Cook and his crew came to the nearby Nooka Sound to pretty much come in and cut down some of these trees for tall masts of his ships. And at the time, these giant cedar trees would have seen limitless. These days, there's about 10% left of what once was here from the original old growth forest. So most of what we have seen is actually a new growth forest. So we're gonna go head out to the beaches now. First beach is Long Beach. We're gonna go to a very famous spot known as Incinerator Rock. Might see some surfers. So we're in Long Beach right now. This is one of the famous surfing beaches of Tofino. See that why it's quite popular and it's a beautiful day today, not a cloud in the sky, although the wind is a little bit nippy. It's only about 18 degrees Celsius, which is probably a little colder than I'd normally go swimming, but that's probably really warm by standards up here. Okay, so we're at Cox Bay Beach, which is the number one surf beach in Tofino, so any serious surfers, this is the place they usually come to first, and you can kind of see why. There is actually some waves. The last few beaches we've gone to has basically been no waves at all. We're going to start off by having some lunch, hopefully here at the Seaside Grill. Then maybe we'll jump in. It's still pretty nippy, like the wind is cold and apparently the water is 10 degrees Celsius, but I feel like I need to at least jump in uh, once. I haven't really got the wetsuit, so I don't think I'm going to stick around in the surf too long. We'll see. Miranda's keen to jump in, aren't you, Miranda? Not really. The water's too cold for my liking today. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh look at that. Yeah. Oh, it's awesome. So we're at the uh, Surfside Grill here at the Cox Bay Beach Resort. Got ourselves got the uh, the codfish tacos. They look amazing, and Miranda's got the traditional poutine. I have to take a picture as well. This looks beautiful. Yeah, so we decided to chicken out from the swimming. Although lunch was really good, and it was well worth the journey down here to the beach. Wouldn't you say so, Miranda? Yeah, absolutely. I don't think I've ever been to a beach that is absolutely packed in the summertime. Every single person in the water is wearing a full body wetsuit. It's the first time I've ever seen that. So we're heading over to Ocean Outfitters right now and we're about to do a bear watching tour. And uh, apparently the black bears here on Vancouver Island are numerous and they are a different subspecies that are apparently a little bit smaller than the regular black bears that you find throughout North America. We'll be going out to the Claycourt Sound, which is the name of the rare region. We might see some wolves, we might see some orca, probably unlikely, but anyway, it's worth checking out. So we're going to go out there for a couple of hours and enjoy a bit of exploration of the sound as well. We were farewelled by bald eagles soaring around the harbour looking for an easy meal from one of the fishing boats. As we headed out into the sound, we spotted seaplanes taking off and landing before making our way into more remote areas. Uh, 
found our first bear. The, there's another boat over here and they said that a bear went into the forest and as it went in, another one just came out. So let me go over and check it out. Vancouver Island black bear is slightly larger and darker in color than the mainland bear and is considered one of the six subspecies in BC. Their population is stable with an estimated 7 to 12,000 individuals on the island, making it one of the densest populations of bears in the world. The resident bears of Clairquot Sound make their way down to the shoreline at low tide to search for delicacies such as rock crab, starfish and even kelp. Watching them in their natural state, undisturbed by our presence due to the fact they have poor eyesight, made it an absolute pleasure to observe. behind me here, this little patch, is actually an 8,000 year old Native American site. So they use this area up to the European contact. The New Chal North people have inhabited the Cleoquot region for at least 4,200 years, but most likely up to 9,000 years as rising sea level had submerged previous habitations which flooded valleys forming the sound. The word Cleoquot comes from a New Chal North word, Klaoquiat, meaning different or changing groups of people from the region. Along our ride back, we spotted an adorable sea otter drifting along in the current with not a care in the world. A perfect way to end our time on Vancouver Island. Join us in the next part of this epic series as we ferry back to the mainland and take the picturesque Sea to Sky Highway to the mountain resort town of Whistler. We ride the longest zip line in North America and hike the famous Joffrey Lakes before heading to Jasper National Park for the ultimate wilderness immersion in the Canadian Rockies. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed our content, please like and subscribe. And we'd love if you could leave us a comment letting us know what you've enjoyed or what you'd like to see more of. And help us grow our channel, become part of the Global Travel Stories family by sharing with friends, family or anyone you think would enjoy our content. Thanks guys.